My name is Angela. My name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Hello, Stitchers! Hey, everybody! Welcome to another amazing episode amazing. of the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Thanks for being with us! Yay! Yay! We love our listeners. Yeah, even We've if been they're doing small. this for almost a year. You know, we're getting close to that I'm now. I'm so happy! This is episode 46. It doesn't feel like that. I know, isn't it crazy? Oh, I, it goes in a blur. It's going so fast. And we love doing this. We do, we do. So, Nicole, yes. what has you in Stitches this week? <laughs> I'm a TikTok fiend. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I try not to, but it's so much fun. Okay, so they have so many different, like, your zodiac sign is this based on what, you know, this, this, this. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I found one for witches. Oh, witches. Witches. Woman. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go down the list. Ready? Yeah. If you're a Leo, you are a cosmic witch. Cosmic. Cosmic Whoa. space. If you're a Virgo, you are a nature witch. Oh, I have two Virgos in my family. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, nature witches. Okay. Libras. That's me. Potion witch. Oh, potion. You'd be great with Snape. I know. <laughs> Snape is my best friend. There you go. <laughs> Scorpio, yes. a sea witch. A sea oh, witch. That's my mama. That's my husband. Hey. <laughs> uh, Sagittarius is a lunar witch. Ooh. So moon witch. Capricorn is a death witch, which I don't oh, know what no. that means. <laughs> that's my that's my son. Oh, no. <laughs> I think. No, maybe he's a, I don't remember. Okay, I'm terrible with that. Aquarius, which is my hubs, is a storm witch. Whoa. Pisces is a fae witch. Fairies. Aries is a flame witch. Taurus is a crystal witch. Gemini, which is me. Divination witch. Whoa. Which I totally see myself as yeah. that, which is cool. And then last but not least, Cancer is a kitchen witch. Kitchen witch. <laughs> and also serial killers. <laughs> And my mom used to have this kitchen witch and it was just like this little doll and it was supposed to like clean your kitchen while you weren't oh, like while you oh, were like doing I want something that. else. It would just clean your kitchen. Seriously? No, it never, it's a doll. It's not going to clean. <laughs> I want unless it it's clean. Annabelle. It's not going to clean your house. It's not going to clean your house if it's Annabelle either. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But yeah, so I thought that was fun. So I'll probably be doing that a lot. Just kind of your zodiac sign and what you are. Yay. It's fun. So, so hey, fun. potion witch. Go oh, do yeah. some potions. I, I will make some potions for you. I'll brew some. Oh, speaking of potions, I said this like just a little bit ago. Yeah. We've been growing this accidentally growing. There's a, I guess it's a weed. It's kind it's of a, a cool plant. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, uh -huh. but it's wild cucumber. It doesn't look anything like a cucumber. It's this big spiky ball thing. Ooh. It's crazy. And it hurts your hands if you touch it because it's spiky. Oh, so that's you creepy. Can't go. But anyway, it's this big, it's called wild cucumber. But I learned that the roots were used by Native Americans for love potions. So <gasps> ooh, I can make my own love, love potions. potions. Love potion number nine. Fine. Yay. Maybe it tastes good. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably well, sugar. not. Sugar yeah. makes everything better, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, what's got you in stitches? So it's been getting warmer finally. Yay. And my alpaca are still yet to have gotten their haircuts it's happening soon get those hair but we got them a little baby pool so Yay! they can clock and it has been the cutest so cute. thing to see that i i took a lot of video and i showed them all to nicole yeah but just to see them like get so excited about They're the like, pool kick. Yeah, they stand in it and they kick the water oh, up on their so tummy. funny. Or they'll like halfway lay down in yep. it because it's a and very butts small out of it. little pool. <laughs> um, and they're so funny. And they just like very daintily put their feet into the and pool. And they stand in line waiting. And they stand in line waiting. <laughs> they're so polite. They are just the cutest things ever. Get I good love animals. watching them swim in the pool. And when it's empty, mm -hmm. one of them will go pick it up and just kind of like nudge it and pick it up and kind of drop it and like hello, the pool is empty. I would right. like it refilled, please. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. They're adorable. I love my alpaca. They're so sweet. We're going to have to get many pools for them because one yes. is not enough. No, <laughs> we have to put them all together. Oh, that'd be so cute. Little pool party. Yeah. Oh, alpaca alpaca pool, pool party. Pool party. <laughs> you can take pictures and then you can put little like animations on yes, them with I little love umbrellas. It. I love and... <laughs> it. So cute. We'll, have to, you'll, we'll post pictures if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can post alpaca videos pool, of the Paca Pool Party. Paca Pool Party. <laughs> They're so Say cute. Say that 10 times fast. Paca Pool Party. No, thank you. 
Hashtag because words. Because I can't words. even say words. They're so cute. Though. Speaking of words, we're flipping it up again this week. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to do story time. We're kind of messing with the format a little bit because our story time came out of what we're watching and calling our movie time. But it's really like right. a series on TV. But I got very inspired by it because I feel <laughs> it's very <why>? controversial. <laughs> I want to believe this show, but I can't so because cute. of the way that Netflix edited it. I can't. Yeah, exactly. It's right. a Netflix thing. And that so it's crazy. 28 Days Haunted. It came out last October. Watch the whole series because we're going to be doing a three part series Ooh. of it ourselves where that is also the movie, but it also provides the topic for story time story time because I got so like obsessed with it I'm like I want to think that this is so cool but I can't because of editing <laughs> it's, it's hard it's yeah. so hard and, like and I was we're also Angela. jaded because you know we live I, I've been on reality tv shows so I know how how they do it how scripted they can ish be um, they don't necessarily give you a script, but they'll give you a scenario and they're like, you know, try to respond in this way. Although theoretically that didn't happen and the people will get into it. The people <laughs> that that put this together said that that's not what happened, yeah. but it feels like that's what happened. And it could just be a trick of editing. It really could just it's be so a trick of editing. Hard. We'll get into it, but I'll I'll give my two cents then. <laughs> we keep saying we'll get into we'll it. Get so into should it. we? Well, first we got to get stitching. Yeah, we got to get stitching. So let's get stitching with Nicole today. Yay! Yay! This week's stitch for me uh, happened to be a, a gift for uh, someone that I work with, which I thought was fun. It's so, so cute. Yeah. So my whole thing, which I'm sure you'll see at some point, maybe years down the road, because I just have no time, is I love making Chinese astrology animals for people. Yes. With amigurumi. And then I, what I do is I'll make their animal. I'll put the collar of their lucky color on it. And then I put a little pendant with their Chinese symbol. And then they're like... Like um, their earth, wit, their earth, fire, water, their element too, depending yeah. on their year they're born. Okay. So I purchased a pattern from Etsy from Halim Ozel or handmade by Halim. So you can go find that on Etsy. And I made Ronya the horse. Yes, so what's cool. So cute. <laughs> it's cute. Mine turned out gimpy, but it's no, okay. No, yours turned out adorable. Well, we'll go why. But so the cool thing about this pattern is that if you buy it, it comes with the horse and the zebra. So either ah, one, you, you can, can do both. Together. I see the zebra. That's cute. The zebra is adorable, but I bought it because it was a pretty cute horse compared to what I've found on the internet. And yeah. I actually asked Angela, I was like, Angela, what do you think? This one or this one, the free one or this one? And she's like, that one looks cuter. So of course I purchased the yeah. pattern. So Ronia the horse. Now what's crazy about this, my, I was doing great. Okay. I was doing really good. I came to the legs and they're like, you got to put it this stitch, this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch. That's where you mark the, the horse legs after you make kind of the body. And being left-handed, <laughs> that uh -oh. threw me off. I was like, wait, so I put it this stitch, it's going to go that way. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to follow the pattern. Uh huh. And the legs are gimpy. Well, <laughs> so since you were so hook, it's, you were you were connecting them in different stitches, I yeah. think maybe if you did the feet on the opposite legs, I'm guessing, yeah, that would because it goes in around. So you 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 know find where that number stitches, and it tells you to do nine stitches and then nine crochet. Uh, it goes nine single crochets and then nine stitches. So you kind of go on the horse body, right, and then you make them out, and then you yes. kind of follow around, yeah, but. The way my body looks compared to what it is here, uh -huh. it's a lot wider than it is. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so it's fatter. It's a fat horse. Yay, fat horse. Which is horse. still cute. It's very cute. But it's Your fat. horse is still super cute. It's I love okay. it. It's okay. I'll put a po picture of it. Yes. Um, I did appreciate how she, um, they did the eyes. And so you can kind of make it a more narrow face. So I had to kind of connect them in between which was kind of cool so I learned yeah. that trick but the hair Angela <laughs> there's so much hair I on this there horse is. so let me give you a quick update on how to do hair because it was actually cool so you just want to find for them for the zebra they used a three inch cardboard cutout and then you just wrap that around and around and around yeah. right for the horse they said grab a book my book 
was kind of like maybe six or seven inches, I highly recommend grabbing a bigger, wider book. <laughs> oh, okay. The hair is cute. It's like short hair. Uh huh. It's not long hair. Okay. So you need like an eight by 11 book. Yeah. Yeah. You want that width. Yes. Yeah. You so need you the just, width. yeah, you wrap okay. your yarn constantly as much as you want. I had to do this like maybe four or five times for the hair and the tail, but you just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. And then on the lengthwise, you cut it. And there's your little pieces of hair. And then Yay. you go individually into each. <gasps> yeah. That takes forever. It took forever. Oh, but it's so cute though. But I did it. And so they say to double up on the top a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then as you go along, you don't need to do it as much. And then the tail, my tail had like a bump. Oh no. So the, the tail kind of covered that bump. <laughs> oh good. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. So, Fixing our, hiding our mistakes. Hiding, hiding, hiding our mistakes. <laughs> I'm not perfect, anybody. I never claimed I was. Oh, nobody is. No, but it worked out. So I'll I'll post a picture if you want it. If you like it, then go buy that pattern on Etsy uh, by Handmade by Halim, and I use a little different colored yarn, but it worked out. So yeah, you'll see it. So cute. So there's my crochet. Yay! And then uh, yeah, if you have questions, always reach out because I'll I'll walk you through anything. Huzzah! Huzzah! I love it. All right. Okay. Story time. Story time. <laughs> Okay, guys, for story time this week, we are diving into 28 Days Haunted, which is currently on Netflix. That is also going to serve as our movie. So go watch it. It is six <laughs> episodes. They're half hour episodes. So it's three hours of watch time. Yeah, I binged almost all of it in one night. Yeah, I definitely watched it all in one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, we're going to talk about our opinions on it because we definitely have opinions on, on what we think. Right. But watch it so that you kind of, you know, are familiar with what we're talking about here. We're going to take each location. So they travel to three locations mm -hmm. and we're going to concentrate on one location each week. And there's and there's different people at each location. There's different people at each location. And the reason why it's 28 Days Haunted is that they focused on three different locations with mm -hmm. three different t investigative teams and they locked themselves up into these places for 28 days right the reason behind it being 28 days is because ed and lorraine warren woo, woo, woo. we love ed and lorraine I warren do, yes ed and lorraine warren had a theory that it takes 28 days to fully pierce the veil between the two worlds between the living world and the the paranormal world right 28 days for us to fully pierce that veil so that we can intermingle with the other side and mm. know what's going on okay talk so to there them. are many reasons why they think it's 28 days but before we get into that i'm going to give you just a quick little background of ed and lorraine Yay! warren this is taken from our favorite website wikipedia whoop, 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 whoop. So Edward Warren Minnie. Did you know that Warren isn't necessarily his last name? It's Minnie. I think I knew -E that at one point. Minnie. Yeah. Uh, who's, um, and Lorraine Rita Warren were American paranormal investigators and authors associated with the prominent cases of alleged hauntings. We know this. <laughs> Edward was a self-taught and self-professed demonologist, author, and lecturer. Lorraine professed to be clairvoyant and a light trance medium who worked closely with her husband. In 1952, the Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research, or NESPER. Their son-in-law, who, so they have a daughter and the daughter's husband, hence son-in-law, we uh -huh. all know how that works, yep. right? Is currently the head of Nesper, mm -hmm. and he's the one who started this Netflix series. So this is his idea. He right. wanted to test his in-laws theory. So he's the current head of Nesper. You know, it's funny real quick. When yes. I kept looking at him, I was, I swear I thought he was the actual son because he looks very he looks much similar to them. like yeah. them, like yeah. a mixture of them. Yep. Nope. Son-in-law. That's crazy. Nope. But you know, they say sometimes you marry your dad. Yeah. So, you know, true, true. But yeah, so the son-in-law. So Nesper is the oldest ghost hunting group in New England. They authored many books about the paranormal and about their private investigations into various reports of paranormal activity. They claim to have investigated well over 10,000 cases wow. during their career. The Warrens were among the first investigators in the Amityville haunting. Yay! Little side note. 
the Lutz family was in that house for how many days? 28 days. 28 days. Wow. Yeah. Did not know that. 28 days. Creepy. Little side note. Goes into the 28 day theory, right? Um, according to the Warrens, the official website of the Nesper, Viv, oh gosh, I'm not going to say this right. <laughs> That's okay. Viv, Viv, Viv Glam magazine and several other sources, the Nesper, uh, Nesper use a variety of individuals, including medical doctors, researchers, police officers, nurses, college students, and members of the clergy in its investigations. Mm. So they cast a wide net of different types of people to go investigate these. That's great. Paranormal things, which I think is awesome. Yeah. You need to have a wide variety of people so that your sampling of the investigation right. has a more kind of complete mm -hmm. picture picture yeah because you don't want tainted. you don't want just skeptics you don't want just believers you need science you need philosophers you need everything you need everything mm -hmm. so you can get a really clear picture of what's happening exactly and you're not presenting jaded things yep stories of ghost hauntings popularized by the warrens have been adopted as or have indirectly inspired dozens of films, television series, and documentaries, including several films in the Amityville Horror Series and the films in the Conjuring Universe. Yay! All right. So that's just a quick little background on the Warrens. So let's talk about what the 28-day theory is. Let's and do it. And this is from the website denofgeek.com. <laughs> Den of Geek. Den of Geek. All right. So the 28-day theory is the number that it is said the Warrens theorized it would take to reach full spiritual immersion and peak paranormal activity. Perhaps they settled on that number because it was the amount of time the Lutz family lived in the Amity house, Amityville house, hmm. right? I just said so that. So they based it off, they think that they based off that, that's kind of where it started, the theory? It's just, you know, a suggestion that helped. maybe it just coincides that number is the same. But in addition huh. to being connected to zombie movies 28 days later and 28 <laughs> weeks later, True. and that Sandra Bullock movie, 28 days oh, the yes. number 28 has significance amongst some beliefs oh. it pops up in angel numerology is connected to the saturn return in astrology and the sun has a 28 year cycle in jewish tradition celebrated oh. in the berkat hachama blessing interesting 28 days is also the average length of the human menstrual cycle whoop whoop Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and has been connected to the rotation of the sun woman <laughs> woman <laughs> uh, this one i had to throw in because it was just a really funny thing that was thrown in the oh. article 28 is also the name of the weekend song <laughs> with an accompanying music video featuring a lot of nudity and a ghostly lady whoa <laughs> maybe he, he's into uh 28 uh, mm. i don't know Interesting. i just had to throw it in because it cracked coincidence yeah, so those are some ideas as to why the 28-day theory, but their son-in-law, who is the current head of Nesper, wanted to test the theory out. So he put three teams in three different places. Mm -hmm. The first place that we're going to talk about is Captain Grant's Inn. Yay! Yay! So this is from highway.co, hwy.co. Okay. Captain Grant's Inn sits in the southeastern corner of Connecticut. The inn is between the Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun Casinos in Preston, <laughs> casinos. Connecticut. Yay. <laughs> Yay, casinos. <laughs> it's approximately 45 miles from Hartford and just off the I-395. Located in the historic village of Poketanuk. Did hey, I say that right? You probably did it. Okay. Good job. I, hopefully I said it right. <laughs> I'm sorry if I murdered that. Within the town of Preston, Connecticut, the family home built by Captain William Avery Gonzalez Grant stands wow. as one of the oldest preserved buildings of its time. Captain William Grant built the inn in 1754. Wow. Right? That's a long While time While it was ago. originally a farmhouse, Warren and Nora Strong purchased the property in 1969 and made the necessary conversions to make it into a bed and breakfast in 1993. Wow. However, Carol and Ted Matsumoto are the current owners and have owned it for more than 25 years. Oh, they're happy there. Yay. Cool. The home is now well over 200 years old. Wow. Carol has a very special attachment to the home. We'll talk about that in a little Neat. bit. The home is now well over 200 years old and is on the National Register of Historic Places. It stands just as beautiful as when Captain Grant had it built. 
Captain William Grant lived in the home with his wife and three children. The story of the Grant family took a sad turn when at the age of just 32, Captain Grant died at sea off Aww. the shore of Cape Hatteras. Oh, that's sad. Hatteras? Hatteras. Hatteras? However you want to say that. I've heard it said both ways. He left behind his wife, Mercy Adelaide Grant. Mm. Adelaide. Yep. That name pops okay. up a lot, right? His two children and one unborn child. Captain Grant's wife lived the remainder of her life in the home before passing away in the 1800s. Three generations of Grants lived in the house before it left the family. The home served as a shelter for runaway slaves Aww. and continental soldiers while the Grants lived there. Wow. Isn't that a cool bit of history? I like that. I like that too. When the home left the Grant family, it changed hands a handful of times before the current owners, Carol and Ted Matsumoto, took over ownership of the inn. The story doesn't end there. Many say that Mercy continues to wait for Captain Grant to return home. Aww. Captain Grant is said to be haunted by the wife of the late sea captain, among other ghostly beings. It's not much of a stretch to think that Captain Grant's could be haunted. The oh. original town cemetery <gasps> dating all the way back to the 1600s Whoa. can be found just behind the house. Wow, that's what they're talking about. Right? Oh, okay. And the modern cemetery dating to the 1800s is found just oh. in front of it. Well, fun. So, so it's it is surrounded. flanked by <laughs> two cemeteries. Oh my gosh. Dating from the 1800s, or I'm 1600s, sorry, the 1600s yeah. all the way till modern times. So it's just right in the middle. It's right smack dab in the middle of that. Why would you put the cemeteries around it? I mean, I guess the 1600s one was there before, but then why would yeah. you build the 1800s one? Because that was in the Well, 1700s. Captain Grants does sit on four acres of land. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there's space surrounding it but sure the property Spooky. is surrounded Thanks. by let's put dead bodies cemeteries. all around you right <laughs> <laughs> the inn has served as a bed and breakfast since the mid-1990s it has been rather busy especially after a popular netflix series uh -oh. show 28 days haunted featured it as one of the most haunted locations in the united states the owners confirm the haunted atmosphere by stating that the spirits are friendly but protective. Aww. While some visitors to Captain Grant's Inn describe it as spooky or chilling, many guests enjoy their stay and don't experience any paranormal activity. Cool. Carol, one of the inn's owners, likes to joke that she has more dead than living neighbors. <laughs> yeah, you're surrounded <laughs> right? by cemeteries. Yes. Guests come from all over to experience the paranormal and most leave having experienced the unexplained. Common occurrences include hearing footsteps in the attic or taps on guest room doors. Disembodied voices are also captured frequently. Mm. Captain Grants has gained notoriety over the years, appearing in TV, on home and garden television, and a and E's Psychic Kids, hey. Children of the Paranormal. They've been mentioned by a variety of news outlets, too, including USA Today, CNN, and others. Carol wrote a book, The Ghosts of Captain Grant's Inn, about her own encounters with the supernatural, both growing up, mm -hmm. because she has been able to connect with the other side since she was a little girl. Oh, wow. Yes. So both as growing up and as the owner of Captain Grant's. It's an interesting addition to stay at Captain Grant's. So they recommend that you buy her book, read her book before you go stay so you can get to know all the ghosts and what's going on there and get to know Carol. Carol and Ted love to get tours. They don't have an official tour, but they love to show off their home. That's fun. And talk about the history and tell you everything yeah. that's going on. And Carol herself has been featured on a couple of the shows. Wow. So one of the shows that she was on, and I think I may have provided... A link to it features somebody that I know, Jack Osborne, because uh, I used to work for the Osbournes, yep, right? Yep. So Jack Osborne has a TV show called Portals to That's Hell. That's right. I, right? To, I think I linked that about uh, one of our haunted houses in Texas. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he and Katrina, who he investigates mm -hmm. with, went to Captain Grant's. Nice. And there's a clip on, on YouTube that you can watch of their investigation, which okay. is really cool. 
where they bring Carol in because Carol is very connected to the spirits of the house. Sure. And they put noise canceling headphones on her and they put a blindfold on her. Which I would never do. they go into a completely different room. So she's sitting at the bottom of the stairs and they're, I think, in the Adelaide suite. Okay. Which is where a lot of the activity happens in the Adelaide suite. So they're talking to just the entities of the house and then carol is answering them whoa so it's really spooky and creepy I like it. and i will show it to you and we will provide links okay. on our website Yay. so it's it's pretty darn cool I love it. so i recommend watching that but you'll get to see carol do her thing and as she connects to the spirits of the house that's cool yeah also there are our news clips from wfsb channel three which is a local connecticut uh news channel Mm -hmm. fox news i think (laughs) fox Fox, where carol talks about just some of the hauntings she has experienced at the end as she is a clairvoyant of herself as a clairvoyant herself so i provided some youtube clips okay so what do you think of that video that i just that was cool i again no i thought Matsumoto, I assumed Asian lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's not. Yeah, She's Hudson just Pelley's. like the normal yeah, yeah, yeah. Western white. Well, I'm, I'm, my last name's not what I am either. So yeah, it's true. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Very not. Uh, I'm not Norwegian at all. Right. But no, it's cool. I mean, it's probably a slow news day. I always say that when they're reporting on ghost well, stories. Well, it's Connecticut, so it was oh, like okay. Halloween so like, time yeah. when they reported on Captain Grant. That makes sense. But that's cool. Like the picture falling down. That reminds me of a lot of other things we've reported yeah, on. And, yeah. There's a picture that falls down. Yeah. And again, we're going to link the the youtube clip from fox news yes. on but another couple things is that they continue to film because he stayed at captain grant oh fun okay so he continued to film through the night okay he filmed he stayed in the adelaide suite fun. and he continued to film okay. would you like to see what of course on i camera? would yes okay so this is another video we're gonna link all right Ooh. so you can see him sleeping there that lump in the bed is oh, him. Oh, that's him. Okay. Yeah. But the lights are going crazy. Yeah. The lights are flickering like crazy. Oh. And he's not awake? I would, nope. That would wake me up. <laughs> I know, right? It would Especially wake me up. Especially at six in the morning. Well, we're moms. We're light sleepers. Yes. So. <laughs> six in the morning. I'd be already awake. Yeah. Oh, that's true too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, wake up. I think that's probably what that's Adelaide, the mom, is saying. <laughs> yeah. Wake up. <laughs> it's time, <laughs> it's to, get time up. to get up. So his light is just flickering on and off oh, for no freaky. reason. Yeah. It's a lot of crazy light activity. So that's a common thing that happens in the Adelaide room. The Adelaide room is the most haunted room. And I'm going to get into more details about what happens in the Adelaide room. Sweet. But lights flicker. We talked about how that one portrait kept falling off. That's Uh, in the room. Yep. Okay. And she likes to rip the shower curtain off. She doesn't like the shower curtain in her bathroom. Exposed a lot of shower. I don't know. A lot of things happen in that bathroom. Somebody said on something. There are so many people that have made videos on YouTube. Interesting about Captain Grant's. You can see. There's like a gajillion of them, and they all have different experiences. Wake up, freaking a man! Like that would wake (laughs) me up. These lights just keep flickering for the last like ten minutes. Uh huh. And he's not awake. No, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't that pretty cool though? Yeah, it's just a static camera. Camera. The newsman that did the last article just left his camera running in his room all night long. And you can see him sleeping in the bed. Right. And then the lights are just flickering. They just keep the bedside light. Oh, yeah. 6.58 a.m. Yep. <laughs> Wake up. Wake <laughs> up. Oh, I, it's even light outside. What? <laughs> yeah, it's even light outside and the light is still flickering. This guy is <laughs> He's still asleep. sleeping. That's what gets me more than anything. <laughs> Freaking wake up. Weird. Us as moms, even when we try to sleep in, we can't. So I, I think cannot. you're just mad at him because yes. he's sleeping in. <laughs> wake up, man. Uh, but that's but crazy. That cool? well, for the like the whole hour in different times, yeah. he's, it just keeps flickering. Carol keeps a guest book for all the guests to write down their paranormal experiences. It keeps going. Yeah, it keeps going. Holy cow. So... And that was, what, two years ago? That yeah. was Halloween. 2021. 2021. That's cool. So Carol keeps a guest book for people to write all the paranormal experiences that they've had. So the shower curtain in Adelaide's has crashed and come down. That's crazy. There have been some other things like just phantom touches and, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of a thing. Spooky. Somebody felt like it felt like they had a phantom cat or phantom presence touch their legs in the Ooh. middle of the night, just kind of tap them Yeah, a little bit. They often see... 
a woman who they think is Adelaide. Well, we'll get into the hauntings. Let okay. me get into that. We'll get into that. That's fun. Though. So for years, ghostly rumors have swirled among locals that Captain Grant's Inn contains spirits and paranormal activity. However, those rumors were confirmed when the inn was featured on 28 Days Haunted, where experts tour some of the most haunted spots in the country the Adelaide room which I have pictures of it and I'll, I'll we'll link them onto our page as well mm -hmm. the Adelaide room is apparently a hot spot for paranormal activity a guest reported seeing a woman wearing colonial era clothing with two children Aww. others have heard random knockings Ooh. the TV turns on and off sporadically and have seen the shower curtain fall onto the floor with no explanation. Right. Did wow. we mention po po <laughs> I'm going to have to say the town again. Pokedanuk's first cemetery is located directly behind Captain Grant. Yes, you said that. Right. That's so if crazy. the idea of spending the night with a few ghosts is appealing, head straight to Connecticut's most haunted inn. Yeah, there's not much in Connecticut. We'll right. definitely have to go to this place. <laughs> well, Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually didn't happen there. It happened That's on funny. Universal lot in Hollywood. Woo -woo. So go check it out because it's really cool. You can totally picture the whole town square Aww. happening there. So, yes, this is Adelaide's room. So it's really cute. They have all yeah, these exposed beams everywhere. It's mm -hmm. very quaint. I know that there are a lot of dolls scattered all Not around cool. because, nope, you know, I would take them all down. She had children. Yeah, so, cool. you know, they, they, they left dolls around everywhere. Nope. No, but you can you. see some of these really cute rooms. It's a like really cool bed and breakfast. Yeah. yeah. And it's on four acres of manicured land. So these are just some of the rooms. Wow. They have, I think, four or five rooms in the main house. And mm -hmm. then they have an additional house as well that this is the additional house right oh, here. Oh, wow. A little tiny one. Yeah. They Cute. have a couple of rooms in there that they say is also very haunted. Wow. Most of the spirits in this house, they say, are very, very friendly. But sure. there is supposedly at least one dark entity that also we gotta have one. House gotta have one but look at the grounds isn't it <laughs> That's beautiful very pretty okay so this next part i'm gonna start talking about the investigators that oh, yes. investigated <laughs> Ooh, my favorite. now that we know what some of the hauntings are okay. and we know that this house has been featured in a lot of different things on a lot of different shows you right. can see how many shows on youtube and how many paranormal researchers have been there which is funny because i've never heard of this place right? yeah. either but it's a very popular haunted Spot. place do you know what it reminds me of what um what is that movie the john cusack movie room 408 is 1408. that 1408 1408 yeah and the opening sequence where he's staying, he's staying at a haunted a yep. little inn yep and they're, <laughs> they're so cute the yes. owners yeah yeah that's what this reminds that's me that's true of. So we're going to talk about the team that investigated because Please they are do. paranormal researchers um, okay. of their own right. So are they gonna, and gonna, they're together always? A couple of them are. Oh, and then okay. one just kind of joined them. Okay. So we'll talk about who they are. Got it. So this is from the cinemaholic.com. And this kind of goes into just a brief detail about who these paranormal researchers are and kind of what they're doing now. Okay. okay? So Sean Austin who is the the psychic the medium, medium. Mm -hmm. Nick Simmons and Aaron Thompson. Nick Simmons and Aaron Thompson work together and they've been working together for over 10 years as paranormal researchers. Okay. They were assigned to investigate the paranormal secrets of Captain Grant's Inn in Preston, Connecticut. What the trio did not know was that they were a part of an experiment meant to prove the validity of the 28-day cycle theory by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Sean claimed that he was a psychic medium who could sense energies and communicate with the paranormal. Both Nick and Aaron have been working for a long time as paranormal investigators and tech experts. Though the former claimed to be a skeptic and likes to find a scientific explanation for the supernatural. Okay, so yes. what it was hard to understand is they all had to sign agreements on this TV show and they didn't know they were going in because of this experiment. Yes, they didn't know. They knew they were going to be staying for 28 days in okay. lockdown doing paranormal research right. at an undisclosed location. So they didn't know where they were going. They knew which city or were area they, they were flying oh, okay. into yeah but once they got to the airport before they were taken to the location they were blindfolded i don't believe that sorry <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is that they weren't allowed to research right 
the place that they were going to. Right. So they aren't allowed to research the place that they were going to. However, you'll see a theme. And what I was trying to prove is that a lot of research has been done at these places. Right. There have been a lot of experts that have gone. They yeah, are, if you're they a are paranormal, unknown yeah, if you're an, places. a paranormal investigator, expert, quote unquote, you are going to know so many different places across the country. So, And you're going to know history about these yeah, places. Yeah, so before yeah. you go, I'm sure they were like, it's like a, a, ga- a game show, right? You're going to do some research, right? Yeah. So You're going to want to know what you're getting, getting into. into. Yeah. So that's but, the hard part about this so whole show. So it's hard to think that they had no prior knowledge exactly. of Captain Grant's in. Theoretically, according to the show, they had no knowledge of where they were going. Right. And once they got there, their blindfolds came off. They were like, oh, we're at this quaint little inn in Connecticut. Cool. We're going to go and stay here and lock down for 28 days. Mm -hmm. They had no contact with anybody from the outside world. At one point, I think halfway through the experiment, they were allowed to talk to a historian via Zoom to confirm what they was that. I thought that was only one of the three. They only showed one of the three, but all of them got to do it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So they all got to confirm their findings with about halfway through. Got it. With a historian. But yes. So what happens if they were like completely off? (laughs) Maybe there were four and they just didn't show the fourth (laughs) one. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. See, that's, See, that's, uh, that's why, why our so skeptic high. pants My are My skeptic on, right? pants are way <laughs> up high, guys. Okay. Starting with Sean Austin, the psychic medium is also a demonologist and is presently based in Connecticut. Over the years, he's appeared in multiple shows like The Demon Files and Ghost Loop. Besides, he was a part of Devil Down South, a documentary by Discovery+. Plus. The investigator has published a book called Shadow Chaser, which details his dealings with the supernatural. As of writing, Sean travels around the country to help people plagued with the paranormal. Okay, well, that's sweet. This next little bit is a little bit more about what Sean is doing now. Okay, so I got this off of ctinsider.com. So this is an article from ctinsider.com, which we will also link on our webpage. All right. You can stay at Captain Grant's Inn, and we will link the website to book a stay. If you want to, you can. One experience I found to be super exciting happened once already in February and will happen again in August. Oh, exciting. So this is an experience that you can do in August of this year. And as far as I know, you can still book it. Okay. Paranormal experts recently visited the inn for four days in February to film their experience for a documentary. The experts also hosted paranormal enthusiasts and those hoping to spot ghosts during the event. Nick Grossman and Charles Rosenay, co-founders of Paracon and the Salem Paracon, weren't there for the original Netflix taping. Mm. They're talking about 28 Days Haunted, but they were on site for the return. Uh What's more, after selling out of the February experience, they'll be returning to host another ghost tour event in August. Oh, cool. Sean Austin. Uh Uh-oh. Yep. Sean, our psychic medium. Fun medium. Right? A premier psychic investigator was the main guy, and he's one of our team investigators. Interesting. But he's not a Connecticut guy. He's known nationwide, okay. Rosney said. He did such a great job. The show got incredible ratings. I thought, what? let's go back to this place and bring people with us. I told Sean he could host it, and he jumped all over it. Hmm. So Sean hosted the February event. I think he's coming back in August to help the August <laughs> host the August. You guys event. gotta go meet Sean Austin. And this is how it went. Okay. The during the day part of the stay occurred upon check in, while the after sunset portion happened after an orientation about the nature of the haunting of the inn and how to use some paranormal investigative gear at dinner at Valentino's restaurant. Grossman handled the gear tutorial, the tour of both cemeteries behind the inn and across the street, as well as the inn tour. The gear included spirit boxes, Mm -hmm. dowsing rods, and something Grossman said he was excited about called a polter script. What? I know. This is what it is. The device converts energy into words or, at the very least, letters and yes or no. I think on the portals to hell with Jack and Katrina, they use one of those. It sounds very eerie. It does. Polter script sounds creepy. 
Yes. Attendees at the event, including this writer. So the the guy who wrote this article, I think his name is Vinny, was at the event. So he experienced all this firsthand. Cool. Reported hearing words and phrases during the experience. The cemetery tours included a recently discovered crypt. Now, this is kind of crazy. On the property of the one adjacent to the end. So this is the older one. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, the one adjacent. To, well, uh, they're both adjacent. Yes, they're to the both end. adjacent to the end. So I don't know. <laughs> There's a crypt in one I of them. I don't know which one. Okay. So, which ghost hunters said they were able to climb down into Ugh. and check out for themselves? Creepy. That is until the final night of this February stunt. Uh oh. Six of us went back a short while after the main group had explored there, and the crypt was now impossible to enter. What? An array of branches, trees, and chunks of wood were carefully spread out throughout the entrance to the crypt it looked like the branches were cross hatched <gasps> someone or something did not like us entering Whoa. there Rosne says there's no way a human or even a group of people could have done this in that short a time so what happens if someone had those already made somewhere and they were just like oh we're gonna put it here yeah i don't know you know like I I know. Know, it's hard okay yeah and like but that's spooky the, it, it could was. be part of the whole shtick like yeah oh what happened we were able to enter it before <laughs> now we can't like, yeah so okay. i don't know interesting all right moving we weren't there but we have our skeptic if pants it, on but if we it was there. true if this if they if no humans made it that is a definitely spooky thing yes okay <laughs> we have such have our skeptic I know. Pants well, on the this. show that, that it didn't help the show did not help you know how much we believe we are so much true believers but <laughs> the show makes it hard the, the when, editing yes, makes it hard yes. when you make it a netflix show and we'll talk about it more later but it's just yeah it's annoying. It's okay. worth checking out as annoying as it is. That's why we're doing yes. this. Yes. Because I wanted to show, I'm like, these places this really are research. haunted. Yeah. So he relayed the story at breakfast where guests were joined by the inn's owners, Ted and Carol Matsumoto, Mm -hmm. who prepared the meal. Carol said she believes there are at least 300 spirits occupying the property and has written a book about them. One being Mercy, another being a little girl named Deborah, who died at age five in the 1700s and is also buried in the cemetery behind the inn. Oh, poor little five-year-old. And then the 298 others. Sure. <laughs> That's a That's lot. That's a lot. Rosne, Grossman, and Austin will return to do it all again the second week of August. Ooh. It is limited to only five guest rooms. Guests looking to either stay the night or just visit for the investigation are asked to email ctparacon at gmail.com for an application. The investigation starts at $99 per person, while rooms at the inn are an additional $299 per night. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad. (laughs) Okay, editor's note. The reporter who wrote this story was at the experience as an attendee, and the reporter is Vinny Penn. Oh, hey, Vinny. This was in February... February of 2023. So this nice. year. Okay. So if any of you guys can go in August, we want to hear about it. That's Let so us cool. know. It would be cool. Well, let's talk about okay, what the okay, other okay, team. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So when not investigating the paranormal, Aaron likes to research the afterlife and has been doing so since 1999. He has been passionate about the field since a young age and utilizes his public speaking skills to raise awareness about the supernatural. The father of an adorable little girl has been working with Nick Simmons for a long time, and the duo is quite proficient with technology. They also work together for Aaron's YouTube channel, Ghost Crier PI. Oh, interesting. I have not. We got to check out their, yeah. okay. their YouTube. Uh, YouTube channel because I haven't done that yet. Nick seems to be a private person, yet is quite happy about being part of the Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Money, money, course, money, money. Right? Oh, well, that makes sense. Right. We wish the three of them the best in their lives and hope they have a fantastic future ahead. That is from that CTI. I was like, that's not from you. (laughs) No, 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 no. Well, I do wish them well. I hope they do. Sure, sure, sure. No, that's, I'm glad what they're doing. They're doing what I couldn't do. And that's all I have about Captain Grant's. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Before we dive in to. Which I want to talk about. I know. It's been, we've been like hinting at it. There's so much to talk about. Okay. But so it's fascinating. Yes. I love the history behind it. Agreed. There's so much 
That's old. I mean, to go old. into. It's old. Maybe you have something that old and you have cemeteries yes. attached to it. Of course, you're going to have course. some kind of experience and Of course, you're going to have energy lots of experiences. And, There's ugh. lots of energy, lots yeah. of experience, lots of things going on in this right. place. Mostly, it seems like they're friendly, but there great. are some dark entities there. Not cool. Depending upon which paranormal research researcher that you want to watch right it will be colored in that way oh wait okay hold yes. on i'm going to reiterate this so yes february they were there they were there in february doing ghostly activity stuff yes the show the netflix show took place came out in october of last year 2022 see, this is why i don't believe it and you'll see why okay you'll understand okay let's let's dive in I, yes, I know where you're <laughs> going. I know where, going? where you're okay. going. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to do our movie yeah, time. Yeah, watch the show first before you we start to review it. Yeah, okay. okay. It's movie time. Movie time. Okay, so I'm not going to give the IMDb stuff. There is IMDb readings oh, yeah, you on don't this, have to do but that. No. I'm not going to do that yet. It. But I am going to give you just a brief synopsis because they do jump from group to group. It's not just these. this hour is this group, this hour is this right, group. Right, right. So I'm going to give you a brief, brief synopsis of what this group went through. Okay. On their first night in the inn, the team tried connecting with the spirits using a spirit box and Sean's abilities. They were able to establish a connection with a female entity called... Adelaide. Adelaide. So I liked the the medium analog thing oh. that they were using, right? Because oh, he was yeah, using the crank right. and then that's it was right. like, you know. Clicking? Because clicking. it's supposed to help get the energy out, right? Yes. It's supposed to give them energy. Yes. Okay. Yes. It helps provide energy with yeah. that spark that thought keeps that jumping cool. between the balls. I like that machine. I yeah. thought that was really cool. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So they established a connection with a female entity called Adelaide. Which, duh, the room's called Adelaide. It's on the door. <laughs> it's on the door. Ugh. Several other spirits apparently wanted to be heard, but were blocked by a malevolent force. Oh, you got that word really well. Yay, malevolent. <laughs> the next night, Sean was determined to continue his conversation with Adelaide and her connection with Captain Grant because they didn't know. Sure, because it's not called Captain Grant's Inn. Well, they they didn't know how she was related to oh, Captain sure. Grant. Okay. Because theoretically, they don't know anything about the property that they're right, on. Right, right, Okay. Sorry, my skeptic panel. I know. I'm so sorry. The okay. trio discovered that Adelaide was the spirit of Captain Grant's wife and that she longed to meet him. The group initially assumed Adelaide was waiting for her husband to come home, hence the longing feeling. However, when the investigators ventured into the graveyard just beyond the property, they quickly realized that Adelaide and Captain William Grant were buried side by side. Quick side note. Captain Grant's grave is empty. They never found his body. He because was he lost died at, at sea. sea. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So they but did put a grave marker. That's why he's never there. Yeah. They did put a grave marker next to him, mm -hmm. but he's not buried there. I guess I wonder if you die somewhere else, but some people have come back to their homes, but he's never been. They can return. I don't know if he's one of the spirits that haunts or if it's just Adelaide. Right. I haven't heard but that his spirit has the haunted show, the house. The show, obviously, they never had him come up, I think. The right? show never had him yeah. come up. Okay. Yes. And he's not a popular ghost, ghost sighting. Okay. Adelaide is. Right. Or Mercy, which okay. is her real name. This led them to conclude that her longing did not reflect her separation. Instead, she was trapped in the property and wanted to meet her husband in the afterlife. So that's what they concluded. Right. That she's stuck there by a malevolent spirit. She can go to the light. She can't go to the light because she's see her waiting. Husband. Yeah. She okay. wants to see her husband. Right. Even though he's not buried there. That's no. okay. They didn't know that, apparently. Yeah. Soon, writings appeared in Sean's mirror. This is one of Nicole's favorite parts. <laughs> though Nick <laughs> felt the psychic was doing it himself. Mm -hmm. Nick is the skeptic. Oh, super skeptic pants. Big skeptic pants yeah. on Nick. The spirit box session following this seemed to increase Nick's skepticism and brought a rift between the group. He made his partner cry. Aaron, do I you remember that? 
I was like, this is so over dramatic. I know, You're crying. It was so dramatic. Are you and doing it for TV? The show, well, or? the spin the show, I'm sure they because were Because it matched the episode. Was yeah. What they were doing. Like, uh, well, the, the malevolent forces are supposedly creating rifts. It was, yes. It, that's, that's what they made the episode yeah. about was malevolent forces in each of these areas were creating rifts between. Right. But I'm sure at that point in the investigation, they're just exhausted. Yeah. They don't have any contact. They're sure. missing their family. Aaron does have but he's crying a young, over this. Well, he does have a young daughter, and he's getting into fights uh, with his partner, and, and he I'm wants sure he's to, just I'm sure exhausted. Misses, yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's I think you know. Oh, TV. Anytime you're in a situation where you're trapped in a, 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 situation. a situation, you can't get out of it, and you're stuck. <laughs> you you're know, just your emotions are gonna sure bubble up. Sure. But. Okay. Anyway, however, Sean put his hurt aside and told the others that the difference between the three was the work of the malicious spirit. So he's Sean is blaming it's the mm. evil entity trying to split us apart to make right? us not work together. Yes. Yeah. Who was manipulating them to have them leave the property. Okay. He doesn't want his hold over the property to be broken. So he's trying to make us leave. Right. And and so not discover away. the yeah, truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Sometime later, Sean had a dream where Adelaide pointed to something outside the house, but in the opposite direction of the graveyard, which means they're going to the other graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. Nick and Sean investigated using a thermal camera and found a hot spot in the ground. The next day, Nick went out and dug the spot where he found a handcrafted pentagram. This is interesting because why would it be hot? Why would it show up on thermal camera? Uh, because they're saying it's, a, it's something that's spirit. I don't know. I know, but, but why? why? It's, it's metal. Metal is cool. It shouldn't show up as hot. Right. That's why they're saying it's paranormal. Right. Right. So, you know, there's that. I don't know why that was that way, but I mean. But someone could have gone out and the, and the production team put it in there and then like well so the production on. team had strict i know no contact sure orders. but they didn't contact so they them allowed they could have been on the grounds doing this behind <laughs> the scenes this is me doing my skeptic pants sorry guys there are ways to get around this i'm sorry uh, oh go find this out i'm yeah. sure they're like hey there's something out but there but he had a dream uh-huh were they whispering subliminal messages in sure. their cameras yeah right? <laughs> Like the Could nanny cams. Okay. This led the team to believe that the pentagram had been dropped in haste and a portal was created for paranormal entities to come to the psychic plane. A malevolent spirit had used this to hunt Captain Grant's in and trap other souls. So it's like ghost ship. Wait, I thought that was, they thought it was because some guy back in a long time ago was doing witchcraft there and he... That was one of his medallions or something. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. that could be what they speculated, but it was dropped in haste. Right. And sure. okay. if they were trying to bring a dark entity to that area to trap other souls, however, the pentagram was dropped in haste. Right. It's okay. trapping the souls. Here's there. my other question because they explain pentagrams. I always thought, yeah, pentagrams are looked upon, frowned upon, but I mm -hmm. thought pentagrams were actually good for witch, like good they witches. They are. They're, they're for good witches. Yeah. It's a protection. Yeah. So why yeah. would that be so bad? Like Christianity uh, wanted oh, that's to right. That's right. What they explained it. <laughs> Christianity. Stupid well, religion. because anything pagan, right. Christians tried to flip it, right. and make it a bad thing. So when um, that's what I'm just saying. Yeah. What happens if it's a good thing? What happens if it was there to like keep out, keep out the malevolent yeah. spirits, and they flipped it? And, yeah. Yeah. I don't so, know. So see, you never know. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. During their last night in the house, Sean blessed all the mirrors in the property to provide the spirits with a way to travel to the afterlife. While this happened, the malevolent entity became agitated and started throwing things around. <laughs> I know. The never attic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's okay. right. All the chairs like flying no. down the attic. Did you see the attic kind of when, when they would pan into it? Did you see like, weren't there like bottles of lotion or something like way up there? Did you see <laughs> No, I didn't see that. <laughs> I have to okay I'm gonna find it before when we leave oh, guys if you're watching this and the all the activity is I don't know what they were but they're either cans or bottles I'm like who's living in the attic I don't know I'll show that's you crazy. okay okay, okay. I'll have to show you back that that's okay. details everybody details lotion I don't know it what they puts were the lotion up. okay <laughs> okay Sorry. nevertheless that's okay never nevertheless the team persisted and Sean could confirm through the spirit box that Adelaide had moved on mm -hmm. 
he <laughs> i know this is why you're like nope See? yeah <laughs> you know what i'm doing because here. you can go and adelaide is still there but you know maybe she's just free to come and go as she wants and she's not yeah there. okay all right uh-huh that, well, he was like, oh, they're free. Yeah. Oh, the spirits. But, they're, they're, I, are you here? Are you free? Oh, yes, I'm free. Remember, like, yes. they're responding. It, yeah. Yeah. I know. Very dramatic. Mm-hmm. He later went to her grave with some flowers and stated that he had formed an emotional connection with her. <laughs> oh, I remember the end. Oh, Adelaide. I feel like I'm bonded. Uh, <sighs> so... If, yes. they're, if they're doing still paranormal investigations at Captain Granson after the fact... That they went and cleared the spirits. And let them go. Yeah. How yeah. does that work? Uh, well. See? So that drives me my crazy. belief is that once you've left the physical world, you are no longer tied to three dimensions. You're in a fourth dimension. So that means three dimen- when you're in the three dimensional world, we have a concept of time and space because we have to. Because everything is physical. Everything sure. has a space that right. it has to occupy. And we move through what we think of as time. Right. But when you're out of a physical space element, time and space do not exist. Okay. Right? Sure. Because you have nothing physical holding your body. Right, right. right. No boundary. No boundary. That's why we have residual hauntings because they just think that it's not like they're reliving the same thing over and over again. It just is. That's how the, the, the energy was affected. Right. And it just is that. Right. Always for them. uh, But they're, they were so at, and I get what you're saying, which I, I totally agree. But they were so adamant that these spirits were being held by a malevolent force yes. in the inn. Yeah. So if they were free to go do whatever they want, wouldn't you want to leave the inn and do whatever you want, right? So you're not always coming back. It, it doesn't matter about time. It doesn't matter about time. But and I and it doesn't back. matter about space either because they can be at the inn and they can be sure. with their loved ones and they can be... At everywhere. all times. Yeah. Everywhere at all times. So they're Everything not. Everything everywhere all at once in the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they're not stuck in a specific location. Sure. Adelaide can absolutely be Captain Grant's and also with Captain Grant and with whoever she wants to be I know, at all. I would not want to be back there. If I could choose to be It was anywhere. her home. Yeah. But now you have a cool new home. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But I just, so the really idea behind the malevolent spirit, I would watch the portals to hell and watch how Carol handles because she says that she's been possessed on several occasions. That's if so you creepy. watch some of the other paranormal investigations, uh-huh. that's why I'm saying some of the spirits aren't that nice. Right. Because she has been possessed by not nice spirits. Ugh, that's and not so cool. that's where... I feel like, you know, they've watched some things. Yeah, they have to see, because they don't know. Not all the spirits are kind and happy. Some right. of them are bad. And that might be where they got the idea. I don't know. It all feels too convenient to right? me. Right? Exactly. They put, they put together did, things so easily. Right. I did find an article okay. that I'm going to bring up. It's, it goes back to the Den of Geek. So we're going to link this as well. Den of Geek geek.com this is an article written by aaron sagers who was the journalist that was brought on to enter or to to watch so it's this guy right here okay right it's the bearded guy who's with the head of nesper okay right yeah he's the the son-in-law the son-in-law right so there this is an article written by him Okay. About his experience watching all the footage. Oh. And it's behind the scenes of what's going but, on. Okay. And that still is doesn't through, get me to. <laughs> it is through a certain lens. Mm-hmm. It is through a certain lens. So I will say that. But the way that, he, I don't know, this article kind of solidifies things a little bit more for me because he says that he and Sparrow went through thousands of of hours of footage Mm -hmm. and they watched all of it and then they edited it together and pieced it and that's what makes it terrible the crew was in a strict no contact they set up the cameras before the investigators got there i I saw that that's kind of neat how they were they were mounted yes in certain the other episodes yeah i could see that that was kind of fun how they had all of the yeah so all the cameras were up they weren't in the bathrooms obviously they had to have some private spaces but in all the public spaces anywhere the crew had cameras Mm -hmm. running the whole time they all of the movement shots the teams had to learn how to handle their own camera equipment they had to learn how to mic themselves Mm -hmm. and the investigative teams set their own hours 
there was a crew that was set in like a portal building across Mm -hmm. from wherever they were staying. So they weren't allowed to go across the street. The one time that they did interfere was in Madison at Madison Dry Goods because of reasons which we'll talk about in a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah. But okay. But that was the only time the crew interfered with anything that was going on. What's not to say they didn't set everything up too. Like beforehand set the pentagram and I they could have they could have set things to fall. They could have rigged things to well, move. Well, yes. they could have they could have done so much. And that's what I hate because again, I'm a believer in a lot of things, yeah. but the way this was filmed and set up, anything is possible to try to so get ratings. I and- will tell you that Aaron does address some of that. He oh, talks okay. about uh-huh. Now, it's not in this one. So we have a whole section called skepticism and debunking (laughs) in this article, which he talks about something that happens at the Lumber Baron Inn where all of we see footage of all the doors opening, which we'll talk about. And the one pendant light swinging. Right. And he does say that they've they had it forensically looked at from different teams. mm -hmm. And there is no explanation for why those things happened. So if you read this article, it does solidify what happened better. Okay. Like it makes you feel, take your skeptic pants off a little bit. <laughs> Loosen them up. Loosen your skeptic pants there. Okay. Um, so it does validate a lot of what the researchers did. Okay. Was it really overdramatic? Yes. Oh my gosh. Too much to the point. That's why I. All I wanted was facts. Yeah. Not drama. You have to think about how exhausted they are to be stuck in a space for 28 days without contact with their anybody. loved ones or sure. anybody. And they are researching but then I night agreed after to night. Do this. There's a lot of energy that's draining when you're. Uh huh in a high energy environment like they were Mm -hmm. and i'm sure it's very scary too because you're trying to talk to ghosts the whole time yeah i mean just the idea when you and i were ghost hunting i I would get so nervous and we're just doing these tours and we go into these houses and we get it like a speech anybody that's been on ghost tour you guys know how before you go into a building they'll tell they'll you talk all about, about it, it. Mm-hmm. and then you go in and they'll be like oh people have fainted people i'm like it's a high energy environment sure. when you go into those things because you're on alert yeah you're yeah. on alert so I they're on it. alert 24 7 so i'm sure a lot of that plays a factor <sighs> yes and <laughs> yes so you know but but i do believe captain granson is haunted no i don't i don't believe i don't not, not believe, believe that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, again, history, history and where it's located and how long it's been there. Sure. There's probably some kind of, you know, phenomenon that you can't explain. Yeah. But when you send in this team of ghost hunters, mm, <laughs> I get a little more skeptical. No, no, no. And that, uh, this is what I was telling my husband. So um, if you've ever seen um, like My Ghost Story or anything, one of those where they they talk about their own personal experiences. Have you seen those yes. shows? Yeah. And then they recreate it. And obviously yeah. It's, but you feel that genuine 100% fear and storytelling. Like, it's a lot more real than what yeah, we saw. We, because what we saw seemed... Acted exactly because it's not edited together that way yes unfortunately yes so it's so hard so if you read the den of geek article okay it'll calm a lot of that down for you i'll read it and just just <laughs> know that these haunted places were chosen because they are very haunted sure sure sure, sure. and so for me that's where my skeptic pants go on because i'm like if these are very prominent paranormal researchers of course they're going to know a little bit about the places right. that they're going into yes. it just makes sense that they would yeah because they're professionals and they know like i'm sure they know a lot of different haunted yeah. places so you know it that's where it's harder for me to and believe they're that from they're going there are they where scene. are they from did it say i'm sorry no so Sean supposedly is not their Connecticut guy is what that one article said. Got so it. he's not the he's psychic not medium there. that they use in the New England area. Got it. Okay. And I don't think the other two or live New in England that area either. Okay. either. So okay. they may not know much yeah. about it, but so, I don't yeah, know. You never Still, know. there's like so many people that have investigated it on YouTube. Of course. It's been featured on a lot of different shows and then a yeah. lot of press. And if you're a paranormal, professional paranormal researcher, you probably would have seen those on YouTube at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It's so entertaining. Take it at you will. Take it, take it yeah, <laughs> as you at will. your will. Yeah. yeah. 
As you will. As you will. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting. I'm glad you brought this up because this is fun to debunk and, and prove and, and watch. And so. So what do you guys think? Yeah. What are your opinions? You can email us at the ominous stitch at gmail.com. We want to know what you guys think. If you've been to Captain Grant's, if you want to go to Captain Grant's, what do you think about 28 Days Haunted? What do you think about the theories of Ed and Lorraine Warren? We want to know. We want to know. So you can email us there. You can reach out to us on any of our social medias. We are on all of the things. All the things. If you want links to what we talked about today, you can jump on to our podbean.com. Podbean.com. That's where we post all of our show notes and all of the fun things that we talk about. So you can click on any of the links to the articles that I discussed today. You can also click on a little button called become a patron. Hey, hey. shout out to Brittany and Kate. Brittany and Kate. Thanks Hi, being patrons. Thank you for being our patrons. We love our patrons. We do do patron episodes. We do send you stuff. We give you shout outs. We love our patrons. We love our community. So if you want to become a patron and help support our little podcast, yay! we would love that. If you just want to reach out and say hi, we would love that Please. too. Say hi. Okay, so that's another into another amazing episode. Yay. Good job, Angela. I'm so glad that you agreed to let me do this <laughs> series. Nicole was like, I don't want to do it. And I was like, no, no, please. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. No, it is. No, I like knowing the history. Too. Yes. That is fun. Yeah. So good job. Okay. Yay. Yay. So with that being said. See well, you, Stitchers. See you, Stitchers. Oh.